Welcome to Epic TV 10x10. We've got the Enduro World Series champion Tracy Mosley in the house. And to keep it on a British feel, I've written my questions out on the back of a Weetabix packet. feedback we've had from some of the viewers uh, who don't quite appreciate my humour, we're going to do this very, very seriously today. When you're riding in a race and when you're riding in practice, do you change your tyre pressures between the two? Between practice and race, yeah? Yeah. Never, no, nah, it's not working. I'm going to change the question. You are one of the most focused riders I've ever spent any time with. We're in Spain right now and you've brought a road bike. Do you ever wish you weren't so focused because you could be out there on the trails having fun with us? Uh, yes, simple answer. And yesterday <laughs> was the day where there was a dirty, dirty headwind all the way out. And I did think, what the hell am I doing? Those guys are out just sauntering around their mountain bikes, stopping, having a chat, doing all the things that you do on a mountain bike ride. <laughs> and I was just burying myself into headwinds. What is it that pushes you to that point? I don't know, I, I don't, it's just, that's just me I guess. No one else has set myself a challenge, I've just set myself one and if I don't succeed in doing what I set out to do then I feel like I've failed myself more than anything. I'm hoping that when I have time to stop racing that I will lose that because otherwise it's going to be a pretty, pretty intense life for the next 50 odd years. Were you always better at multiple choice questions? Because let's face it, you are ticking boxes through your career. You're going for the Commonwealth Games cross country category now. I was definitely an exam person. Any chance I could get to do an exam over an essay choice. So I guess maybe that's part, yeah, maybe it comes from that. Do you th feel like your life, your, your career really, is about ticking boxes? Um, I mean, is there something no, else or it, it's just... It never ever started out like that. I never had a plan to do that. And I think things just evolve, I guess. And definitely winning the world champs was a huge big box that I needed to tick. And I never thought, hadn't thought beyond that. It was then, then that kind of led me onto this, okay, now what's next, what's next, what's next? This little one this year, trying to do the Commonwealth Games is a huge, huge challenge. I think actually ever being able to tick that box is probably unlikely, but the process of doing the training, of basically just getting more endurance fit, which for me is important for my main focus, which is the trying to defend that Enduro World Series title. You know, your tick's just outside the box. You're not going to get your lucky gonks and throw out your pencil case. And no, I think, I think I'll look at the exam. Yeah, no, yeah. I think I'll do it. Have you ever thought of having a sex change? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to be like you, Dan. The times you set are pretty high up, even in the men's categories. If you were a, if you're a bloke rider, you'd probably be winning and earning a lot more money. Yeah, I'd earn more money, probably, but I don't think I'd be winning. Maybe, I guess, if I was a male, maybe I would have the attributes and the strength and a bit more testosterone to let myself go a bit faster. But I've enjoyed being at the top of my game and pushing, hopefully, what women can do and showing that you know we can ride bikes pretty fast and demoralise quite a few guys along the way. It's, it's one of the few sports out there that women actually ride exactly the same course yeah. as the men. No, I think for me, one of the big attractions is the fact that we're racing on the same weekend, you know, that we, we can then kind of tag on to the exposure, the media and all those kind of things that come along with the men's race. And I think sometimes if women's events are separate, you lose some of that. So I think it's important that we're all together, we're showcasing women's riding against the guys, mm. and we are riding the same terrain. Have you ever wished that you were born Canadian? And it just seems like Canada is just a place made for mountain biking, whereas England is this little tiny little island that it's full of rain, it's full of rain, it's full of rain, it's full of rain. It is, and I do enjoy going to Canada, and the riding's pretty amazing. But they haven't produced until recently that many really, really good mountain bike races. I'm glad I'm where I come from. So why do you think Britain has produced such like leading athletes in mountain biking? I think success breeds success. So I think once we've started having success, then there's the youngsters have got something to look, you know, look up to mm. from the start of the downhill racing circuit. If you wanted to get an uplift and you didn't want to have to push, you had to go to a race. So in order to ride a downhill bike, you went to a race. Ah! Um, have you ever been on a start line and not needed a poo? Rarely. I mean, how do you keep a grip on your nerves? I think years of practice in a way, and a lot of it comes down to trying not to think too much about what you're about to do. I think if you start and analyse every little corner that's coming around the trail at that last few seconds, then it becomes too much. So I normally spend you know, five or ten minutes before being concentrated and then try and just 
put those thoughts away. And make sure you've gone to the toilet, always carry toilet paper. I always carry toilet paper just on the way to the shops at my age. So, uh, there we go. Do you wish you'd paid more attention in language lessons at school? Because the the World Series, the Enduro World Series, is now going to Chile, and it, it goes to Italy, it goes to Scotland. There are all these different languages. How do you keep abreast of, of everything that's going on when you're, when you're on a tour like that? You speak English because luckily everyone speaks English around the world. And shout. And shout loud. No, I think that's one of the things, if, if only you, you never know what you can do with your life, but if someone at school said to me, you know, by the way, for the next 20 years, you're going to be traveling the world racing your bike. If I were you, I'd, I'd knuckle down on this French lesson. That would have been quite useful. But I think if you could show kids that actually you can have a lot of fun doing adventure outdoorsy stuff in different mm. places in the world and actually speaking a little bit of the lingo would help a hell of a lot. Like you say, speak English and shout. It's got us to where we are now. Recession. You've run several rounds of the, of the World Series and you won the first round at Punta Alley Italy on a 29er. Do you think there needs to be even more wheel sizes? 30, 30 inches and 24 inch back wheels and do you think Mix they need more of it all? For this season I'm going to pretty much stick to one wheel size, just again for the ease of having spares, you know, carrying all that kind of stuff, it's not possible to travel the world with you know, we, two Can we ask what that wheel size is? I think it'll be? probably be 29. Really? Yeah. I mean it, there is a big separation isn't there between how you ride and, and how I ride or that you know everybody else rides in a way you could have ridden down that trail on a washing machine and you'd still be faster than I can ride that trail so it's sort of when when pro riders sort of uh, Imagine become, how better you could ride though on a washing machine like, you could ride any wheel size that yeah you I could have, and that's the quite nice actually the thing with Trek that I've got all three options which not mm. every company has I am a racer and I want I want to ride what I think is the fastest and for me I'll choose a wheel size depending on how fast, you know, the fastest I think possibly for that course. Do you ever wish that uh, science had been allowed to clone people? Because you, you've come from the, the big Trek racing team to, to Timo racing on your own, where you used to have this whole tent of, of squirreling uh, busybodies. Think how much easier it'd be if you had, if you could clone James and, and just have a, a fleet of James uh, Jameses. Uh, fleet of Jameses? One is plenty <laughs> enough hard work looking after. Definitely not any more than just the one. Having that difference over a career has been fun actually. You know, having that big corporate factory set up is an amazing experience. It's good opportunities, you do learn lots. Um, but it's also nice going back to the other end of the spectrum. And In 2011, I think you did the, you did the Cape Epic. And yeah. that sort of gave you a little flavour for adventure. And then, then the following year, I came with you to India. We did a great trip in the Himalayas. But there was one incident where a monkey leapt across the trail and nearly knocked you right off your bike. Do you think that that moment has put you off returning to adventure mountain biking? <laughs> no, not at all. I think the racing at the minute, I, I still can race. That's the thing, I'm still, I've got a few more years left in the old body, hopefully that I can push it to its limit. I'm hoping that I can pick up on some of those pretty amazing trips once my racing career is, is done and I have finally got rid of that little blooming button that says, come on, push yourself every winter. You'll end up on one of my trips. Hopefully not. Okay. That was all right, those questions were a bit stupid, so. Let's go back to tire pressures. So um, tell us about your tire pressures. What would you like to know about them? What tire pressure do you run? Depends on the course then. <laughs>